Hey guys, Drewski here, and today I've got some more action-packed airsoft gameplay for you guys from Mission Airsoft in San Antonio, Texas. But today, I'm not only going to be showing you some cool kills with the Crytek, or maybe some some little bit of newts of the AKS-74, which I'm super hyped for. I'll show that in the next video, guys. But I wanted to talk about something that is really near and dear to my heart, because whenever I first got into airsoft, I studied the heck out of it. I had a lot of fun just learning about it, because even in my junior RTC unit, we used to learn about survival and all this stuff all the time from our uh, Air Force instructors. In Airsoft, it's something that seamlessly transitions from real life warfare straight into the sport. It's a really, really interesting subject to study, but also if you know some very, very basic things about it, you can have a massive advantage if it's your, let's say, first time going out Airsofting, because I know a lot of the people that watch my channel um, are people that might not even play Airsoft or people that maybe played a little bit or very new to it. But what I'm gonna be talking about today is camouflage. And as a 12 year old who got into Airsoft, I used to, I used to go online and look at like army uh, military handbooks about camouflage and I used to learn exactly how to face paint and it was like stupid how much I used to obsess over like I need to get my kit perfect because I'm gonna go to a milsim op next next weekend and I'm going to my friend's ranch where it's gonna be grassy how much wood how much grass should I tape to my ghillie suit you know things like that were the most important things in my life at that time and that's why it, it still is something that resonates in the back of my brain every time I go airsofting and that's why when I played at Mission Airsoft off just yesterday I was inspired to make this video because there were a few new players there who weren't really wearing any sort of camouflage they would wear some blue jeans they would have even a black hoodie or even a black combat shirt on and they would go in and it was pretty easy to see them against a wooded environment and it's nothing against them maybe they can't afford or they just haven't gotten yet some camouflage but even if it's your first time airsofting I just kind of want to tell you how much of an advantage you'll have even wearing some basic camouflage in an environment like you play in an airsoft and some people might look at me like I'm gonna say like this camo's the best but in reality no camouflage is the best it's a very subjective but uh, it's not very subjective it's just a very situational uh, type of thing you know what area are you in you know I can't just suggest to every viewer here what camouflage is going to be the best I just have to kind of let you understand that hey if you're in a wooded area you need a more woodland type of camouflage or if you're in a desert area you need a more desert type of camouflage just basics like that will kind of get you a lot farther than most people get step one this camo's bad don't wear it ever if you're in america this doesn't work anywhere mm -mm, nope the army is already throwing it out in 2018 don't do it don't you're too late look at this picture look at this is the team i used to be a part of look at that that's me look 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 at the camo i'm wearing i'm wearing basic mid 81 look at these people all this camo and guess what now the army's throwing it out i wonder why Actually, I found out it works in one location, and that's your grandma's couch. It works amazingly there. But yeah, as I said before, I was inspired by the players at Mission and even some players back at D14 that were wearing solid colors. Solid colors are good unless they're like black or blue or something that's crazy off the charts away from anything that you see in terrain. What you see in terrain is green, tan, and brown. And people that wear solid black, it's extremely visible from a distance. And as you can see in some of the footage here, I was shooting at a guy in a bush about, I would say, 100 feet away. And the only reason I shot at this certain guy was because I saw about a hand-sized object that was black. You don't find that in nature. You don't just see black objects in nature. And if you wear a black hoodie or a black type of camouflage, it's just, it's gonna be pretty visible in the daylight. So I continued shooting and shooting and shooting at this object and finally my BBs reached it accurately and hit it and I see a gun go up in the air. I'm like, yep, okay, that's why you wear camouflage because if that guy would have been wearing even the most basic of M81 Woodland or even some real tree camo that you got for 30 bucks at Bass Pro Shops, I mean, this guy would have not been dead. Seriously, I would have not seen him if he was wearing camouflage. And some people might wear some black camouflage that has like, you know, the multi-cam black pattern, but in reality, uh, black camouflage isn't going to work either. Even at nighttime, people say that you gotta wear black because black is camouflaged more at nighttime, but the thing is, is that light affects everything equally. So if it gets darker and everything gets darker equally because everything is equally going to be losing its amount of reflectiveness because there's no more light you're going to be darker than the area around you because you're still in a wooded environment that is brown green and tan and if you're wearing black in a brown green and tan environment even if the even if the sky is totally dark and the moon's out and stuff you're still going to be darker than the area around you so make sure Make sure, don't wear black, don't wear black. If you can't get any camouflage, wear tan or green. That's just basic, wear tan or green. Or maybe even brown, brown's fine. 
just roll around in the mud. That, that'll be good enough. The biggest important thing you need to worry about in this choosing your camouflage is matching the color scheme of the area around you. I'm going to give three different biomes right now, desert, semi-arid, and woodland. And so there's over at the left, I'm imagining that I'm already animating some sort of desert thing. I'm going to put some Texas footage in the center and then some woodland in the right. So see, see what I mean? So you snow guys, I've never seen snow, but like twice in my life. So you're out of here. You pick your own camo. I don't know camo. But for the rest of you, 99%, oh boy, do I got the camouflage collection for you. So for the viewers who live in wooded areas, these are going to be the best camouflages for you. Now, this is going from what I'm expecting going to be the most uh, most common and the most easy to get gear and uniforms for, and then the least common and the ones that are the hardest to get gear and uh, camouflages for. First off, M81 Woodland. Woodland is going to be in America especially, but it's, I think, the most popular camouflage ever made, as well as the most like copied and, and distributed camouflage, and it's going to work great. It's always been one of those best camouflages out there, and for woodland environments, it's awesome. Marpat, the marine pattern. This is a digital version of woodland, basically, and it's also very common as well because it's the standard military issue camouflage for the marines since, like, 10 years ago. Uh, Multicam Tropic, this one's a rather newer one, and you're not going to really see this much anywhere, as well as Atax FG. That one's slightly older than Multicam Tropic, but for these two, you're going to have a little bit harder time finding uniforms, especially ones that are cheaper, um, but you should be able to still get some good camouflage patterns out there if you go on certain sites like uh, Evike or airsoft gi you can usually find some good gear that is in these types of camouflages or just get solid gear like if you have a uniform of multi-cam tropic just get a green vest and that'll work just fine but yeah, so if you're in a wooded environment, I mean, look outside and, and try to determine how green or how brown your area is. And you can kind of choose from these camouflages which one you think matches the overall look of a forest or whatever place you're going to be fighting in the most. And then you can use that camouflage to your advantage in the airsoft battle. For semi-arid environments, you guys probably live near me if you're in the U.S., which is Texas, and Texas is a place that has both green areas and then also some very tan areas. I mean, you have some green forests, some green oak trees and cedar trees and such, but then you also have very, very bright tan grasses, and those tan grasses in sunlight look as bright tan as a desert type of biome. So in my area, you kind of have to get a mixture of both tan and green, and camos like multi-cam, again, M81 Woodland, AOR2, ATAX slash ATAX FG, both of those are going to work kind of both ways. And and all these camos are kind of mixtures. Again, some of them, like M81 Woodland, are primarily for woodland environments, but they can work in some areas in Texas pretty well. And I'm kind of giving this a good spectrum, too, because there are some areas that, you know, from 100 feet away, you could be in a very desert-like lo location. Then 100 feet away, you could be in a very foresty-like location. So, you know, you kind of need to adapt to that. And then for you desert guys out there, three color desert is going to be the main one for you. This is a very bright camo though, so if you want to go a little bit darker, desert marpat might be a little bit darker. And if you also want some slightly darker things in there, you could go with multi-cam arid or atax, and those kind of go from brightest to darkest in terms of desert type camouflages. And even in some locations in desert, multi-cam will work just fine as well, because most deserts, especially the ones that a operation is going to be happening in, don't exactly have no foliage at all. So multi-cam and, and camouflages like that still might work, but you might have some better performance out of something like multi-cam arid, which is a more drier version, a less green version of multi-cam, but still has the ability to have that good pattern in it. Now, if you don't have any surplus stores near you or don't have the ability to grab one of these camos, which, I mean, you could go on Amazon and grab them, but just in case you're on a really, really tight budget, you can go to your local Walmart and grab some real tree camo. This is usually in the hunting section or in the, you know, boys section of clothing, and these will be everywhere. I mean, you can find these at any hunting store ever, and <laughs> these will work just fine in most environments, especially woodland. Uh, they will work just fine, and they'll work better than any black hoodie or any even tan or green hoodie you'll find out there just because they have that disruptive type of camouflage. I'm going to show you guys some raw screenshots of the footage that I got today. And just for an example, I might show just a few more even after I record this because I might find them later on. This first one is a guy that is wearing some real tree pants, but then he's wearing a black top. And if you blur the image, making it kind of looking like what you would see at a distance, let's say you're 200 yards away and you're looking at this area, you can definitely tell that if you blur the image, you can't even see his legs. His legs almost blend in perfectly to the environment. You can kind of still see the different shades of the shadows on his kind of back of his butt area and his feet, but that's basically it. 
Compared to his jacket, where he's wearing a blue or black sweater, uh, it's extremely a huge difference in what you actually can see and how much he blends into the background of his environment. This is another good example too, where I'm running beside Scott with my AK in hand. If you blur the image or you blur your eyes a little bit and you act like you were seeing this from a distance, it almost looks like his leg isn't even a solid object here. The camo does a perfect job of making it look like you're looking at something that is not a flat surface. You're looking at something that is differing, di differing like colors of leaves versus grass and stuff, and you almost see like it, it really does a good ex like example here of how Marpat works so well is that it looks like his left leg isn't even there. Now this next situation is actually a very, very good example of how camouflage works so well, especially in this certain situation. We have a area of foliage right in front of us that is semi-seeable through, I guess you could say, semi-transparent. It's almost like a PNG. If you put the transparency to 50, you can kind of see through it, but you also kind of can't. And there's areas where it's going to totally block your vision. There's areas where it's totally not. And it's really, really important to have a camouflage pattern because if you're behind an object like this and you have any sort of camouflage on, you're basically going to be invisible and as he walks out you can actually see that he has a tricolor pant on but then he also has an m81 top and i thought this was interesting but surprisingly this was working very very well for this environment because you see that the bottom of the area is all very very tan very dry grass and then the green of the trees is above him and that makes it pretty effective to have a green top on and with tan pants. Some could argue that the green is a little bit too dark and the tan is a little bit too bright, but I think that it actually worked uh, surprisingly well for this terrain. Now I'm going to show you why multicam works so well in my area. Now this might be a totally different story for somebody else, but for me, in this one screenshot, this explains the entire story. I mean, look at my arms and, and look how they react with the color of the ground near them. I mean, this terrain is almost exactly where multicam fits in because it's got a mixture of the greens of the trees, but then it's also got that nice bright tan, some browns in it as well. And the disruptive type of camouflage that multicam is works extremely well. I mean, you even see Via behind me holding his uh, KWAM4. That is a very, very almost nearly invisible guy if you blur the image a little bit, making this look like you're seeing this from a hundred yards away, for example. That's why I like this camouflage so much. Not only is the pattern pretty cool looking, but also the colors just match almost seamlessly with the environment around me. And this is what you should look for when you go out and shop for a type of camouflage that fits your environment. You should go look for something that if you throw it on the ground, matches your environment pretty quickly. There's no magic camouflage out there. There's always the trendy ones that come out every year from big different companies, but even if you wear something that just simply matches the environment like tan clothing in a more desert-like area, you're going to be cutting down your visibility by 50% and if that 50% means the difference between a hostile seeing you and not seeing you that's gonna make a huge difference when it comes to just your standard pickup game so guys that'll be my video for the day hopefully the importance of camouflage was 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 well said in that because I think for airsoft it's a very overlooked thing unless you're in a real like milsome type of scenario but even in pickup games like this it's just extremely effective to have something like a basic form of camouflage so guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.